friends and welcome back to Sunshine and Serenity and today is herb garden planting day so I've been waiting for this day for a couple of days uh, I was able to get most of my vegetable garden uh, planted before we had rain and thunderstorms for a couple of days and I held off on my herbs and my flowers because a lot of those have to be seed surface sowed and so they don't like uh, to be rained on because then it kind of washes it away uh, and I didn't want seeds to get washed away or misplaced or not come up or get waterlogged so I held off and I was like you know what I'll hold off on my herb bed just a little bit longer and it should be sunny for the next couple of days and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plant it so I've got a variety of herbs and flowers I am actually dabbling in to some medicinal herb growing this year and um, I'm excited to learn all about that uh, it's something new that I'm taking on this year to kind of teach myself some new skills and, and learn some new things about some things that I've never grown so I'm super excited about that I'm just gonna kind of go over some of the herbs that I'm going to plant today in the flower department but uh, herbs in the herb and flower department but I did want to talk about um, uh, what gardening has taught me it's taught me to be patient like when you really want to plant your garden um, or you get all your stuff planted out in Arkansas after your last frost date and you get a late frost right so that uh, is always awful when that happens things happen uh, that are out of our control unexpectedly uh, so that's just taught me that you just got to be patient and um, even if things don't go exactly the way that you plan it to go, that you can still roll with it and you can still grow and flourish and learn something from it. So, uh, yeah, so I've learned a lot uh, with late frosts and plants that's died and pest issues. So don't let those things discourage you because they're still going to happen no matter how many years you have gardened, right? So you just got to roll with it, right? You got to roll with it, you learn something, and you grow in the next season. All right, so I've got a variety of flowers in here that I'm going to intersperse with my herbs. Um, a lot of my herbs, like the medicinal ones that I'm growing, are actually flowering herbs, so they'll be beautiful anyways. But this is the front of my L-shaped garden bed. Um, my husband made these out of uh, deck board, or rather fencing boards uh, that were given to us by some friends. So that's just goes to show you that you don't have to have expensive materials to be able to make it work. We made garden beds out of these. Um, they, the wood was, or the decking boards were free. Friends of ours were just putting up a new privacy fence and they were getting rid of these. And I asked them if, if they wouldn't mind us using them and they said, sure, come pick them up. And that's what we built my L-shaped herb garden bed out of this year. Uh, I know lumber prices are sky high right now. A lot of things are rising in prices and it makes it uh, really not budget friendly uh, or affordable to really go out and buy new lumber if you don't have that extra money. So we just are a prime example of making things work. We use fencing boards to make beds. We've used repurposed pallets to make board. Uh, uh, repurposed pallets to make garden beds. Uh, I have used kiddie pools that I found on the side of the road. I uh, use containers that I found on the side of the road people getting rid of. You can repurpose just about anything into a planter if you really really want to grow something. You can do it. So don't let something like fancy boxes or high expensive garden beds, don't let that uh, scare you because you do not need things to be expensive for them to be successful so I just want to throw that out there use what you have repurpose things you can get creative and you can still garden even if you uh, don't have a large budget so I just don't want that to stop you from going after your gardening dreams or your gardening wants don't let that be the thing that stops you right <laughs> okay so um, growing a variety of herbs but I'm growing a lot of herbs this year and I'm just gonna quickly go over I'm just gonna quickly go over if y'all hear a lot of background noise sorry my kids are playing um, if you uh, I'm just gonna kind of 
hit on some things that I'm going to be growing in my herb bed. So I'm going to be growing echinacea, which is cone flower. Uh, bees and the bees and the butterflies, they love them, and they are a medicinal herb that have a lot of great properties. If uh, you want to know more about some medicinal herbs, uh, I will link the book that I got down below. It's uh, Rosemary Gladstar's uh, Guide for Medicinal Herbs. You can get it on Amazon. It is a great book. It has a lot of really good herbs, their uses, uh, recipes. It's really great for beginners. So uh, if, if you're interested in that, I will link that down below on the Amazon store. I'm also going to be trying holy basil. Now holy basil is one of those things that, for, I don't know why, is the one basil that I cannot get to come up and grow for me. I don't know why. All my other basils, they come up fine, but for some reason, holy basil does not want to come up for me. Holy basil and lavender, those are like my weaknesses. I don't know why, but I'm going to try it anyways. I'm going to sow some seeds in here, and hopefully maybe in here it'll grow. I don't know. We'll see, but holy basil and lavender, they're my nemesis. <laughs> um, and then I'm also going to be doing some chamomile. I've got some Roman and German chamomile, also another great medicinal herb. Uh, a lot of great uses. A lot of people use them in uh, like teas that help them sleep. Uh, there's just a lot of great uses for chamomile. I'm also growing anise, which is another beautiful flowering herb. So again, it has a lot of medicinal properties. So um, you'll notice that, that, especially with this front bed, I want to fill it with a lot of flowering medicinal herbs because not only uh, is it useful and it uh, makes a very functional space because of the medicinal properties but it also makes a very beautiful space because they are also flowering so what people may look at and say oh that's a beautiful flower garden they don't know that that's oh those are actually my medicinal herbs and I actually use this so um, it's dual purpose which I really enjoy I'm also growing white stars this is also known as fever view um, and if you want to know the companies that I bought these seeds uh, from there's different companies I buy from a variety of seed companies but if you want to know uh, the companies that I've gotten a lot of these seeds from, I will link those down below. This is Feverview. Feverview in the name is great for bringing down fevers. Um, it has a lot of other just analgesic and antiseptic properties. It's great in a cold and flu uh, tincture. So that is another one that I'm going to be growing and it gets beautiful flowers. Angelica, it's also a flowering medicinal herb. I'm going to be growing that in the front bit garden bed. I also have another back part of the L which is a longer bed and I'll be growing some of those flower things, flowering things in there as well. It's just going to be basically an interspersement of medicinal and culinary herbs. So it's going to be uh, just my little herb L. <laughs> uh, and then caraway again that's another flowering herb. And then I'm going to be growing Italian oregano. So other than cooking you can, this also has uh, oregano also has medicinal properties too. So it's dual purpose. Lemon balm, that is not something I'm going to be growing in the L, uh, but I will be growing it in pots because lemon balm, if you didn't know, is part of the mint family. And if you don't give it a devoted container or a devoted space, anything like lemon balm, your mints, your catnip, they will take over a space. I actually have a square bed right behind that the camera over there that is devoted to mint and I literally just cut it back yesterday and you can't even tell that I even cut anything. That's how much it's grown and spread. So I will be growing this uh, not in this bed specifically but in a pot nearby. So lemon balm again another great uh, you can use it for culinary but it's mainly used for medicinal. Hyssop look at these are those not pretty they're like purple flower flumes uh, they're really cool. Uh, I'm going to be growing hyssop. Uh, this not only attracts the pollinators, but it also has medicinal use as well. And that's one of the things too. A lot of these flowering medicinal herbs will attract the bees uh, and the pollinators. And so that's great too because you need those in your garden to help with your vegetables too. So when you create a very diverse space that is inviting for the pollinators, you have a lot greater success with the plants that you need uh, the pollinators for. So if you can get them to come to your garden, uh, that is uh, the number one thing that you want because you want to create a space that is pollinator friendly uh, because that just helps your garden you know, grow and flourish. Uh, lovage, it's another medicinal herb. Cumin, this is uh, both culinary and medicinal. I'm going to be growing some of that. I'm probably going to butcher this name, but this is El Campaign. El, Cam El Campaign. 
Um, it is a uh, really good medicinal herb. It's also called horse heel. Uh, and a lot of these herbs are perennials. And so a lot of these I can plant one time and they'll come back again next year. A lot of them are either perennial or they are self-seeding. So they'll just go ahead and self-seed themselves and come back anyways. So that's the great thing about planting a lot of these things now is I don't have to worry about a lot of them next year. A lot of them will just voluntarily come up and that is a uh, great way to get an established bed without having to continue to plant year after year. Uh, but yep, Elk Campaign, Yarrow, which is a beautiful flowering plant that has really good medicinal properties. Tarragon. We're gonna do some more different basils. I've got cinnamon basils and Italian large leaf basils. I'm also going to do some, I'll probably do a couple of things of chives in here just to kind of try to keep uh, bugs away because bugs don't like the chives. So kind of interplant with those. Calendula. So a lot of people know what calendula is. It has great skin healing properties. It helps with the elasticity and uh, the t tenacity of your skin as well as it has a lot of healing properties. Uh, so calendula, a really great thing to have. I will infuse this into oils or salves and keep that in my medicine cabinet. So they're both beautiful and uh, they have a use. So calendula. Um, white whorehound, it's another um, medicinal plant. I've not grown this, so this is going to be a, a new experience, a lot of these herbs. So we'll see how they come up and how they do for me. Um, it may take a couple of years of trial and error to get all of these to come up, but this is just everything that I'm going to try. Again, another variety of calendula. I have marjoram, which is culinary. St. John's wort. Now, if you didn't know this, St. John's wort has uh, properties, medicinal properties. You can take it. It mimics the body's natural serotonin. So this is sold a lot of times in supplements uh, for anxiety and depression because it has a natural, um, it has a natural property in it that helps with those disorders, uh, anxiety, um, depression, mood, disorders, things like that. So a lot of people will take them for that. I actually am growing this specifically because one of my children uh, takes this as a supplement to help with um, just some mild anxiety and uh, depression issues. So I'm going to grow this that way. We don't have to continue to buy them. I can just buy the capsules and, and do it ourselves. Uh, but I have seen a huge, I am a huge advocate for natural medicine over um, just medicating every single issue because I would much rather try a natural approach that our body can handle before trying a synthetic approach uh, and especially with my children and especially with issues that are so commonly um, so many doctors nowadays are just quick to medicate kids over everything and so I am a huge proponent of just natural medicine first and so I have seen a huge difference uh, with taking with her taking this and uh, it has helped immensely so I'm growing this in my garden I hope it comes up because I would really like to not have to buy them uh, you know through through the store but uh, I figure I'd try it so and that's just a little spiel uh, that uh, mental health is not talked about enough and it's not normalized enough. A lot of people struggle with mental health issues and um, I think it's something that should be um, not a taboo subject and that people should be able to go and get help without feeling judged or without feeling like something's wrong with them. So that's just a little thing that I'm passionate about too because uh, we have personal experience with that in our family. All right, catnip. Again, this is not going in this bed because it will spread like the mint family but it will be going in a pot nearby. <laughs> uh, again, chamomile, that's Roman chamomile. And then summer savory. And I believe, oh, and some more sage. So I do have some sage plants that are already grown from last year here. I split them up, they were in a pot and they flowered and they're beautiful, their flowers are beautiful, but I split them up along with my thyme. I put them along planted them in this bed and so those are already grown plants which uh, is great but I probably will throw some more sage in here just because we use it a lot as a culinary herb and it smells really great and they make beautiful flowers that the pollinators love so I will probably throw some of that in here as well so I'm going to plant this space and intersperse it and so the rest of this video will just be a time loop or time lapse rather of me 
planting my herb bed and I'm super excited about it. I'm going to enter plant some herbs and flowers and I just hope this space just transforms into a really beautiful space. I hope the whole garden transforms into a really beautiful space. Uh, this is my second year and we've expanded greatly on the garden and I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like in all of its beauty and glory. But uh, as always, thanks for hanging out with me uh, during this herb planting adventure today and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. It's supposed to be really nice here which we're really looking forward to because it's been <laughs> it's been uh, really rainy and uh, thunderstormy the last couple of days here in central Arkansas and I think we're just ready for a couple of nice days and once I get this garden planted I'm going to probably be spending more time fishing because that's something else your girl loves to do. I love to fish. So, uh, anyways, the rest of this video will be a time lapse. Hey, do you want to come tell our friends on YouTube bye? Goodbye. Bye. Say, say we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Bye. bye. bye.